Hi, my name is Alan Brand. Um, I'm 64 years old and um, I identify as a gay male, cisgender. So I was born in um, Mufulere, Zambia, which is up in the copper mines. My dad was an electrician on the copper mines in Zambia. And um, my mom was British, but she was born in India. I had girlfriends all throughout my youth. They felt safe with me, I felt safe with them. And in standard six, I tended to have one male friend. It was going back in the, the, to the next uh, quarter or the next term when I found he wasn't there. And I was asking, now, where's my friend? Where's my friend? And then somebody said, no, apparently he's moved. His parents have moved. He's not coming back to the school. And I had a total breakdown. I was like, uh, you know, in tears. And I was actually mourning. And I know, didn't know what that emotion was. It was, it was that realization that actually the attraction to this boy was not just, it was never sexual at that stage because I was too young, but it was, a, you know, an attraction of, at, at an emotional level, I was connected to this boy. I hid it, I sort of kept it to myself, it was all in my own head. I became quite involved in the church. I was a youth leader um, in the Sunday school. I became a Sunday school superintendent and I enrolled at the, um, the Baptist Theological College, which was here in Johannesburg. And then um, I really desperately was looking for a wife and I prayed very hard. And then I was directed towards a lady in the church and um, I got married for that reason to this girl. I, I told her right up front that I think I'm gay and our decision as two young people was that she was going to keep me straight and she would fix me and, and I was quite convinced that you could, you know. After the second child was born, she was about a year old when um, I realized, no, this is really not working. At that particular point in time, I was, I was you know, coming to terms with the fact that I was gay and therefore needed to come out. And of course, coming out to the church was a big one. And the church's response to that was that um, I would be excommunicated from the church because I had then uh, left my wife and I was with a casual um, boyfriend at the time. The way I came out to my family was not in my own control. So my father found out from my ex-wife at that stage why I was divorcing her and um, immediately phoned my dad and said, listen, this is true, this is what's happened. He said, yeah, I always thought that might be the case, but I was never sure. But he said something incredibly un out of character, really, for him, because he was not a man that showed emotion or love or anything like that. He was a very cold man. And he said to me, I just want to tell you, I still love you. And that's that, that those words at that particular point in time, and even today when I think about it, make me quite emotional because it was the first time he'd ever said those words to me. And they were very important words. I hung on to those words desperately. When I got divorced, uh, you know, the, the intention was just to stay single and play the field. And it really was a good time. You know, I had a, I had a great time, <laughs> let's be honest. And I, 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 in fact, I always reflect to those years as, when I think about it and I explain it to somebody else, I say I was like a butterfly going from one flower to another. And it was at that time that I had decided to go and do an HIV test. And, you know, when the results came back as positive, I remember that it, it took me back into that space that I came from. And that space was that, you know, if you, if you accept that you're gay and you live a gay life, then you're going to be punished. And so almost like thunderbolts and lightning, something very frightening is coming. And automatically my default mechanism said, you see, you didn't listen, you didn't behave, here's your punishment, God's given you AIDS. And that was the same year I met my partner. I never disclosed my status to him. It was very early, it was the first year. And I remember thinking that I just have to tell him. And I sat him down and told him, and he said, well, I love you and that doesn't matter. Coming out with HIV is almost like a second coming out because you came out that you're gay. Now you've got to come out that you've got this disease and you've got to come out twice. In life, we don't always make the best decisions. Sometimes we choose the best path for ourselves based on what we know at that particular point in time. And sometimes it goes all wrong. Coming out is very important. And I think the reason for that is simply that you can be you and you can accept yourself as you are and you can make decisions for yourself because you're open about yourself. 
You can also find assistance and advice from people that are close to you and love you when they accept you as well. So finding those who do accept you is very important. And not everybody will accept you. But I always say that if somebody doesn't accept me as I am and who I am <clears throat> on my sexual level, then surely uh, that person isn't worth having as a friend. <laughs>